had to sum up what you said about going after the buyers, you talked about you had several conversations. If you had to sum up the totality of what you just said and, and what, what what advice would you give, you know, the 500 something people that are listening right now, what would you give them advice so, as, as far as what you're saying moving forward? Well, what I want to do is give them a tip. I want to give okay. them an actionable item that they can do to get out there and find these people. All right. This is a Keegley hack, guys. Keegley hack. We've, we, we rarely discuss this, but I want to share it. I've been saving it. Um, and in fact, blessed that we had that conversation, Max, because I think there's no more deserving audience than, um, than yours because you helped me so much in, in my career, in my life. I want to give back. I want to give back to the people that have watched and um, that supported me that are fans. joining me on such a short notice but i had an amazing conversation with my guy jamil yesterday just on the phone you know i you, you're only gonna get as big as your circle so i try to keep jamil my, and he was telling me about some stuff he's doing obviously if you guys don't know jamil jamil runs a company called keegley out in arizona and uh what they do is they they run it out of arizona but they're actually like nationwide but you, you know he, what he's what he does is he focuses on the disposition side of the business so um I brought him here today just to have a quick talk because I know a lot of people are saying, where are the cash buyers? Where are the cash buyers? He has like figured out a hack and he's going to, he's going to share it with uh, you guys and myself and go more in depth. Cause we were having this conversation yesterday, right? Absolutely. And, and then he was like, well, I got something to tell you. I'm gonna tell you. And I was like, well, we'll just tell everybody. So I brought you on. So Jamil, welcome back. Uh, Thank you, Max. Bro. It's we, you know what? I'm sad because I'm supposed to be hugging pace and I are supposed to be in North Carolina at, your new office and you know celebrating that with you um yeah. based in his regards um so we're super super sad about that man but you know what there's gonna be another time that's gonna come uh it's only a matter of time yeah man it's it's funny that we built a brand new office eight thousand square feet ton of money and in, in tenant improvements that we put into it then boom coronavirus happens <laughs> but like i was telling you before luckily right before uh the coronavirus and everything hit we were setting up the new office and in my last office all my employees had like desktop computers and right before that we bought everybody brand new macbooks and now they're able to work from home so just glad that they uh that that happened at the right time because i know it would have been kind of crazy to get it so are you do you still have everybody yeah of course yeah, yeah. so what yeah. happens is yeah i i made a promise to them like they've been through me most of my employees have been two years right so we have 14 full-time staff members, 14 families that depend on us, um, which is cool. Um, there is some, we, we did qualify for the uh, the PPP. My banker like was like, hey, do you want to apply? So I think we're going to apply for that and try to get some payroll protection. But, you know, luckily I've been blessed and I don't really need it. But if the government's going to give me some money back that I've been okay, paying, I'm going to take owe it. it. You owe it to your staff because you still don't know how long the the situation lasts, right? And so regardless yeah, sure. of whether or not you need it, you, the, having the cushion, look, I have to commend the government, right? And I don't do that a lot, but I have to commend the government for bailing out the small business person. Yeah. Right? That, that was was look, priority. Yeah. And it was... And it was well, it is, it's well deserved because small businesses feed America. They feed, you know, the entrepreneurs of this country are the spirit, the heart, the driving force, the gas pedal, if you will. And the government looking at that, seeing it and saying, you know what, it's time we actually double down with the small business owner. It's heartwarming to me. I think it's really, really well timed and a, and a thoughtful measure. And so I, I'll leave it there in terms of my, my opinions on it. But I think it's great. We have retained everybody yeah, as well. Uh Say, say it again. We've retained everyone as well. You know, as you know, we have a really heavy staff. You know, near fifty people um, that that we employ that help us disposition properties across the nation. And um, you know, it's it, it, it is all these families depend on us. And I wake up every day to a text message from a different staff member, just saying, "You guys are amazing leaders. Thank you so much." And, and it's so meaningful to us to have to wake to be able to wake up knowing we're secure and have a job when everyone in my family has been laid off. Isn't that crazy? Yeah. Now, now people being laid off. I know this is not what we came here to really talk about, but people being laid off is is have you seen it being like people like furlough, where it's like temporary and they're like yeah. week by week. Yeah. So that's why I think most of it is right now. 
I think that's the, you know, and it, I don't fault anybody for it. I'm not trying to, you know, be negative. If you had to leave people off and furlough them, I understand. The, um, the facts are what they are and, you know, people will overcome, but still knowing that you have a job to go back to, that's, that's fantastic as well. But let's, let's get to the facts at hand. Let's talk about what we're here for, the disposition stuff, because I've, I've got some things to share with you and, and the people um, on my perspective of this, because as you know, we're positioned a little bit differently in the wholesale business and being a dispositions company primarily, our focus is on helping wholesalers disposition their properties meaning the other side of the transaction when you when you're in a wholesale deal you've got your acquisition where you're bringing in your lead the dispositions is the disposition the selling of that contract right and so kegley um four years ago looked at the state of the wholesale business as a whole and saw a lot of training a lot of resources and a lot of effort going towards ACK. And we noticed that contracts were being canceled over and over and over again because wholesalers were locking the deals up and then being unsuccessful in selling the contract. And so we focused on the other side of the business by building buyers lists. And as you know, from the last time I was on your show, I talked about how we build buyers lists is much different from your average wholesaling company, right? The typical wholesaler, what they, what they, what they tend to do is they pull tax records they pull cash buyer or cash transactions from the county and they then skip trace them uh, and get their email addresses somehow, add them to a list without any communication or really any relationship building, and then just inundate them with, with properties, hoping somebody opens the email, not thinking it's spam. Mm -hmm. And for guys who are in the fix and flip business, they're used to that, you know, uh, very aggressive uh, dating style. <laughs> if you will, um, and they'll open the email and a, a rehabber that sees a, a, an attractive enough deal might swipe, might swipe right, right? So um, that, <laughs> that, that, that might happen. However, uh, I see right now rehabbers are sitting on the sidelines, right? A good portion of them are saying, you know what, I'm not out of the game, but I'm going to wait and see mode. I'm, I have to wait and see because I don't know what this looks like in terms of credit. I don't know what this looks like from the mortgage standpoint. I don't know what this looks like from the standpoint, so I have to wait and see. And so now who are the buyers that are ready to deploy, ready to continue to buy and still take advantage of the opportunities we provide as wholesalers? And um, one of the text messages that I received, March 12th. I say March 12th for me was when the world changed. Some people, it might be a little bit later. Some people, it could be a little sooner for me. I realized I was in the twilight zone March 12th, right? So I get a text message from an individual who's bought houses from me in the past. He's not a real estate investor full time. He's like a passive guy. Um, a lot of his money, he's, the majority of his funds are in the stock market, in the Dow, in the indexes. He's one of those guys that his wife is an old school trader from Wall Street. And so they're bullish on stocks always. And uh, he dabbled in real estate with me, but his main investments were stocks. And so he sends me a text message and says, we need to talk. So I call him. I'm driving to L.A. with my wife and we're we shouldn't be going anywhere, but we're still like, Let, we had this vacation planned. Let's just go for a couple of days and see what happens. So on the on the write up, I'm talking to Jack and he says to me, I just lost 30 percent of my stock portfolio. and." I have to level my loss. And right there, I was like, boom, oh my God, level your loss. Of course. He, he, if, if, let's just easy numbers. If he had a dog in the stock market on March 11th, when he woke up on March 12th, it's now 70 cents, right? And so that's a 30% loss. The beauty of, the, of, of why calling me made sense for him is he's always known that what we do is we sell wholesale real estate at 70 cents ish on the dollar. And so the way that his mind worked was I can re I can make that money right back by making an acquisition in wholesale real estate and level my loss. Essentially I can take what was a dollar that became 70 cents and make it a dollar again by purchasing wholesale real estate from Keegley and I'm doubling down there. And so since this happened, he has bought multiple properties from me. He's taking his money out of the stock market and moving it to wholesale real estate because he believes it's a safer bet for him and he can see the upswing. He can see the fact that he can still make the gain and he's trying to level the loss. And so 
first of all, for anybody listening, understanding that concept is key because when you can have an intelligent conversation with a high net worth individual that's outside of the real estate space and you can talk to them about how they can level their loss and you have the capacity to do that, the instrument to do that, the vehicle to do that, you're going to be a popular guy. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And, and that makes sense when you say somebody that took their portfolio, let's just use round numbers. They lost 30% and they had a hundred thousand in the stock market. They're, they're taking out their, their losses and then they're going out and they're, they're buying property at a discount, knowing that the, the property is worth more than what they're buying. Correct. They're essentially leaving their losses out. Correct. Absolutely. And so um, that leveling is a, a phenomenal approach. It's a great perspective to uh, talk to people outside of the real estate space on how wholesale real estate can help them still gain equity, still make money, still be to level that loss, whatever it was they took. The second conversation I've been happen I've been having is about capital. Now, a lot of people that Kegley deals with are physicians, right? We we tend to go after high net worth professions outside of real estate, and so a good portion of our doctors are physicians. These guys are on the front lines of this crisis. They're in the hospitals. They're 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 in the uh, um, uh, doctors' offices, urgent cares, and they're seeing the devastation being you know. Uh, all across the country, they're watching the news, they're seeing the people actually die physically, and they are worried about capital protection right now. They believe it's not going to get very, they're not, they believe it's not gonna get better anytime soon. They think this is at least another month, month and a half away. And the casualties, the losses that they're predicting make them fearful of a run on the bank. And they've been wanting to park their money in wholesale real estate because it provides them a protection against inflation. A prote it's still somewhat liquid because they can borrow against it. They can get a line of credit. They can. There's so many ways that they can remain liquid with that asset. But a run on the bank is a real thing in a time of economic crisis. And so that's the second conversation piece to have with individuals from this group is capital protection. Right now, wholesale real estate is beyond buy and hold, beyond cash flow. In times of crisis, capital protection is key. And if you can provide an instrument or vehicle to do that, you again become a very popular person. It makes so much sense and it, and it allows people to really, it, it forces them to focus on their actual buyer and what their needs are. You're not just right. selling them property. You need to understand why they're buying the property. Are they looking for a tax shelter? Are they looking for passive income? Are they looking to do what you call where they're relocating their assets based upon whatever it is? But, you know, I completely understand. You need to have a more intimate conversation and not a text or email blast with with your uh, actual buyers. I have a question for you. It's still talking about buyers. I'm kind of switching a little bit. What are you doing since I forget what day it was when all the I buyers hit the pause button, even on the contracts they had and said, we're not buying for right now until we can see the clouds clear and see what's going on. What, what, what have you done to position yourself and take advantage of that situation? Because the last time we was in Arizona, we toured through a finished product of, uh, I forget the name of the company, but we fit, we toured through a finished product of one of the iBuyers and we were, I was disgusted by it compared to a, a yeah. flipper. What are you doing to position yourself? Well, we're still buying, right? And, um, and that's the key. It's, Remember, we had that discussion of what happens when you kind of remove the soul, when you remove the humanness out of the humanity out of the buying process, what happens? What happens is exactly what happened when they hit pause and they canceled all those contracts. They left all those people in a lurch. All the people made plans. Look, when Silicon Valley comes to your town and says, we have the billions and we are the ones to buy and we are better than all these little guys because we have all this money and we are we, we will never leave you stranded. What's the first thing they did when, when a crisis came? They left everyone stranded. They yeah. bolted. They bolted, right? And America needs to take note. They need to take note of how did they treat you in, in a time of crisis? They, they tuck tailed and run. We get reached out to constantly now. In fact, the smaller wholesalers that have done their lead gen and had quality conversations with people uh, that got beat out by open door have been having their phones blowing up by people now coming back to the conversation saying, you know what, you're right. I didn't get treated like a person. 
I got treated like a contract. I got treated like crap. I got canceled. I've already, you know, I'm hard on my earnest deposit on my purchase. I've already packed up. I'm ready to move. I'm supposed to be closing and open door has walked away. They've walked away yeah. from me. We've had that exact call come in. I remember uh, we, we had morning meetings uh, on Zoom and we had a, a lady that called in say, hey, I'm in a pickle. Uh, uh, open door was supposed to buy my house. Right. She's uh, near the Charlotte area. Open door was supposed to buy my house and they backed out and I've already have. I need that money to make the purchase on the house that I've already have on the contract going. What can you do for me? We ran the numbers, did the whole thing. And it turned out that they were offering her more than what they were actually going to pay her. If you understand how the I buyers yeah. actually work, so, yeah. you know, it just, it's just weird. Yeah. It's, it's crazy. I don't know how exactly like it, it's sad because she was in such a pickle, but what she was expecting to get no investor could ever give her. And the reality is she was never going to get it from, an open door model either because they're going to go in there and do inspections and, and lower the prices on her. I have, so. I have sold to open door on a test. We've done it before to see what the, what it looked like. The contract number, the price that they give you on page one versus the final settlement on the hub are disgustingly different from each other that, you know, it's, it's time. It's times like this when they've run away, when people now can say, Hey, what have you been doing here? What have you been doing to the people where they can start showing the HUDs and saying, actually, this is what it is. It looks like a bait and switch. If you ask me. Um, so you know, I think it's, it's important that our, that wholesalers, that young guys that, you know, budding businesses remain strong that they continue to lead generation, that they continue to solve problems for sellers. Get out there, call your old leads. Call the people that told you that they were selling the open door. Now is the time to recycle those conversations. To Look, if you're not even going to get a lead out of it, do one thing. You, These people, see how they're doing, right? If anything, if they don't want to sell, if they're out of the market, ask how they're doing. Make sure they've got enough hand sanitizer or toilet paper do what you can do what you can to be of service to the community and the community will serve you you know my team's open line uh right now is you know when we are reaching back out to old leads is simply how are you doing in this time right now how are you holding up and that just opens up a door for everything not really calling to speak about your real estate um just want to see how you're holding up rekindle that relationship and everybody is talking about this current event that we got going on so Absolutely. I've got people that I hadn't talked to since high school um, that are reaching out, just seeing how you're doing. You staying, st you staying safe. You happy? You know, are you OK? And I'm, I welcome those conversations. And I've been reaching out to people that I haven't uh, talked to in a long time, asking how they are. You know, mm -hmm. it's 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 times like this when people want to commune, they want to connect. You know, we've been disconnected from each other. Right. It, I haven't. Other than my my kids and my wife, I haven't hugged anybody. I, I I had dinner with my my mom and dad the other day through a window, because they're in their mid seventies, and I'm worried about I might that I might be a carrier and a asymptomatic, and I couldn't imagine being the the person that hurt them. And so yeah. we ate dinner through a window, and it was what we had to do. But that sounds weird, but it's, it's super it's weird. weird. It's super weird right now you know um, if, you, um, if, if, you, if you had to sum up what you said about going after the buyers you talked about you had several conversations if you had to sum up the totality of what you just said and, and what, what what advice would you give you know the 500 something people that are listening right now what would you give them advice so, as, as far as what you're saying moving forward well what i want to do is give them a tip I want to give okay. them an actionable item that they can do to get out there and find these people. All right. This is a Keegley hack guys. Keegley hack. We've, we, we rarely discuss this, but I want to share it. I've been saving it. Um, and in fact, blessed that we had that conversation, Max, because I think there's no more deserving audience than, um, than yours because you've helped me so much in, in my career, in my life. I want to oh, give yeah. back. I want to give back to the people that have watched and um, that supported me that are fans. And so, so me, before you give your tip, I want I want to pay homage. So when I came up with my idea to create the new company Venture Atlas, I did fly out to Arizona just to visit you, just to understand your business model a little bit more because it was a hybrid of what I wanted to create and help the people here locally in North Carolina. So I pay homage to you for opening your door and not only that, but being very open while we were there. One of my business partners were there and, and you opened your door and, and just 
pulled back the curtains and showed us how you operate. So I, I thank you for being a real one. So it goes course, back and forth. You, you've helped all me love, as well. Man. All love, all love. And so guys, get your notes out, get your notepads out, get your pens. You probably can rewind this video if you don't have one handy. Let me, te let me teach you how to find the type of buyer that I was describing earlier in this, in this show. So write it, down. Like, write, it down. write it down, write it down. What we like to do at Keegley is, is we like to reach out to people of high net worth from industries outside of real estate. So let's, let's take a, uh, an inventory of that. We've got doctors, lawyers, accountants. So let's use doctors, for example, right? So now we want to see what type of publications people from that industry would read. All right. So I know that doctor and, and typically only a doctor is going to read the Journal of Applied Psychology, the American Medical Association Journal and other medical style books, other medical style publications. And so I create a social media profile. All right. And what I do in that social media profile is I'll go and like those publications. The beauty of it is it'll show you what things you have in common with people. So you go and like the Journal of Applied Psychology. You go and like the American Medical Association Journal. You go and like John Hopkins University. And then I go and like luxury items like Ferrari, Lex, Audemars, Lamborghini, right? What ends up happening is I, be, I build a vertical profile. And now that Facebook, that social media profile will have things in common with physicians or what we think are physicians that read those publications and also like those luxury items. And when I'm doing my exploration on Facebook and I come across a person where we have mutual likes, I now know that I've identified someone who is very likely a high net worth doctor. What I'll do, do then is I create templates of messages where I, I send an outreach message. So I send an outreach message to this potential doctor and I say, my name is Jamil. I am with a company called Eagly. We specialize in finding distressed property, wholesale property, typically around 70 cents on the dollar in Phoenix, Arizona. If you would be interested in a property where you would gain instant equity, the day close, I would love to show you our inventory. Please respond. I'll add you to my buyers list and have a conversation with you the following day. Eight times out of 10, guys, the response to that outreach question is, guess what? Yes. They will all, and they will have that conversation with you. You pick up the phone, you talk to them about what it is you're doing, and you rinse, repeat, rinse, repeat. You move across the different industries that I talked about, take an inventory of what other type of high worth industries are out there, Google those prominent publications that they read, find luxury items, create the social media profile, and get after it. Listen, that, that alone, <laughs> this is stuff that we discuss in high level masterminds. I'm telling you what you just heard was a gem. If you don't do that, you'll, uh, I'm not even gonna say anything. Jamil, thank you. <laughs> I, that's all I'm gonna say because that, that is, that is how you change the game and how you get to that position is you start to think outside the box. You don't listen to what everybody else is doing. Yes, you can go to the courthouse and do this and do that. But if you truly want to build relationships with people that really have cash, these are the same people that actually lend cash to your cash buyer. Of course. These are the same individual. You're just going to cut them out and go right to the source because he's able to give them a product that they can just get into like that. So it's important to understand what Jamil was saying and, and pay attention. Like he said, rewind this or play it later. Write your notes down and do what he do. And then maybe maybe just start hanging out in other places. Yeah, and uh, another spot, you know, become a cigar aficionado, like go, go get a hobby that other, you know, dudes that that do big things or cool stuff do right. Get out there and 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 and, and see more of the world. What this virus isn't going to last forever. Right. No. It's this is a this is a temporary thing. Um, I want to yeah. offer one more thing. If, if I can, Max, if you don't mind, um, yeah. I've been. I've been hearing a lot of people, uh, and I know this, we're doing it a lot, if you're on ACT, because I don't want to just leave the ACT guys hanging. Um, acquisition side, guys. Remember, that's what he's saying when he says ACT. He's throwing yes, the me. acquisitions peeps out there right now. Um, of course, I just gave you a gem on, on uh, dispo, but dispositions, but acquisitions, guys, the game is virtual now, right? Uh, the game is 1,000% virtual. The real estate agents, be nice to them. They are pivoting. They are figuring out how to sell these retail flips to their buyers. They have started to dance shimmy shake outside the box in such a beautiful way so first of all be friends with your agents and thank them for all they're doing secondly 
what you need to be doing is communicating with your sellers how they can help you con continue on with the deal. Having a templated shot list, a picture list that you can send to sellers so that they can actually accurately tell you what the condition of the property actually is, is massively important. And if you don't mind, Max, can I direct people to message me and I, that I, and I can send them that? Go ahead, go ahead, bro. If you guys want a copy of a picture shot list so that you can virtually send that to sellers and say, hey, if you, if, I would love to buy this house, but I need to know the condition, take the following pictures and send it to me. Um, DM me on Instagram. It's J D A M J I. That's at J D A M J I. I'm not charging. I'm not selling this. It's, this isn't a pitch. I'm just going to respond with the picture list. That's it. I want you to have that so that you can be better at virtual wholesaling. And if you have a deal, one of Keegley's markets, and you get it because of that picture shot list, then the only plug I is please call Keegley. <laughs> No, you know, here's what I do, guys. I think a lot of people that have been watching me, you know, as as I grow as a person and as, as an investor, as somebody that becomes more financial literate, I, I I truly take serious on who I bring on my platform because I I know these people and I vet them. I know they're not here to sell you anything, um, and if they do, I make sure it's a good product that they that you can go out and get that you're actually going to get great value from. But I just like hanging out around with people like Jamil. Like you asked them, like I fly out to Arizona just to hang out with them and. Go eat it. We that chill, dope. man. We, we eat yeah. ramen and black cod, bro. Yeah, I, that's some dope fish right there. But anyways, <laughs> man, I, I, listen to what he's saying. Take it to heart. Really do it. You know, one of the things that we talk about, um, one of the things that we talk about a lot is that people uh, don't actually go out and take action. And 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 it, if you do what he says while you're sitting at home and try to build that profile, try to reach out to people differently, make friends with your realtors. They're struggling too. A lot of them are adapting. They're having to do things virtually. I'll be honest with you guys. I am I am still buying anything that I can still flip in in two to three weeks. Why? Because in North Carolina, especially typically my market, the triad, right now, if you have anything that's still in the first time home buyers range, 180 and below as a retail product. It's still selling in a couple of days. Multiple so offers are that too, right? Yeah, yeah. We put out a we put out a property on Monday. It sold Monday afternoon full price. We took it, right? Conventional loan. So that's why that's why I, I definitely want people to to go out there and you need to find that buyer and have that conversation with them because truly there's people still buying. Maybe just not the people you had on your list right now. People that's been through cycles before understand what's really going on right now. And if you have a realtor friend, get them to look up in your in your area. Say, hey, tell me how many properties went on market, how many properties went into uh, due diligence, and how many properties went to and finally closed over the last three weeks, going back for a month. And you'd be surprised that the data is not as scary as that everybody's saying on the internet to try to sell you a product. I promise mm -hmm. you. But everybody that can fog a mirror over the last three, four years was flipping houses. So those guys are going to go by the wayside because they're sheep. It's the same way people make money in stocks. By the time you see it, it's too late. Um, yeah. So people that have really, truly have money, and understand this game, they're going to go out and do it, man. Any parting words for people, Jamil? Uh, just continue on. Uh, rem remember, uh, now is the time to sharpen your, your toolkit. Pay attention. L look at the things that Max is doing. You know, look at what he's out there doing. Uh, the people that you resonate with, the content creators that you resonate with, really dive in and learn what you can right now. Honestly, now's not the time to be stroking checks. Now's the time to be filling your mind. Fill your mind. Go out there. Get your first deal. You ha you have an obligation to change the trajectory of your life for you and your family. You know, now is I the time say, to take the action. What I could say is think about the people that got into this business maybe, um, you know, 30, maybe, maybe five or six months ago that solely maybe got three or four deals over the last, you know, four to five months and they got laid off. Guess how they're sitting at home right now? Right. They still kept their W-2, but they got laid off temporarily. They're actually doing OK because they're able to be financial responsible and put some of that earnings, whether it's just an extra 10, 20, 30 thousand dollars in their bank account. They're, they're still living a comfortable life. And I want I want you to be prepared for whatever happens next by yes. being able to do something simple like this. Start in wholesaling. Don't wholesale for 20 years. Start in wholesaling and then work your way up into something else. Uh, before before the coronavirus happened, I was going to developer school to learn how to develop commercial property. And, and so you should, everybody should level up, but start here at wholesaling, get the check, understand real estate, start to understand financial uh, literacy, and then move to the next side.
Jamil, sure. I, it's always cool hanging out with you, man, whether it's in person or, or online. We get to hang out uh, a couple Mondays from now on 420, guys. Max is going to be a guest on Wholesale Hotline. That's going to be a fire show. I, I don't know if you've been able to catch an episode of it, Max, yet. Um, but if you have an opportunity before you come on, you're going to see it is on fire. It's it's noobs from all over the place that watch this, and they they just bombard us with questions. And for an hour and a half, all we do is take those questions and spit raw fire. We're just helping, 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 helping. It's it's a it's an hour and a half long um, gauntlet of Q and A. Hot hot fire. Hot fire. Dialogue, My dialogue, man, dialogue. respect, bro. Yeah, it. man. Thank you so much. Appreciate everybody tuning in. Make sure you go follow him, DM him to get that picture he's talking about, and go out and take action steps what you learned today. Thank you guys for showing up for this impromptu live. I just wanted to share some gems with you guys because I got them, and as I get them, I'm going to send them on. Peace. I love y'all. Be safe in these times. <laughs>